Hi everyone, my name is Marinux Pasevic and in this video I will talk about Entity Framework Core Interceptors and how we can use them to intercept different EF Core activities. Entity Framework Core has many powerful features, with Interceptors being one of the most versatile. Interceptors allows us to plug in custom behavior at different stages of the EF Core operation pipeline, giving us enhanced control over data interaction processes. Moreover, by using Interceptors, we can fine-tune our database operations, enforce business rules, ensure data integrity, and even more. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. Now, let's continue with this topic. Entity Framework Core Interceptors are classes that implement the Microsoft Entity Framework Core Diagnostics I Interceptor interface. The framework call instances of these classes at different stages of our data interactions, depending on their type. We use interceptors to monitor, log, modify, or cancel operations before or after EF Core executes them. EF Core has several main categories of interceptors, each serving a specific purpose. It even provides abstract based classes out of the box for them. We have Save Changes Interceptor that hooks into the save changes process, the db command interceptor that intercepts and modifies database commands, the transaction interceptor which provides control over transaction operations, and the db connection interceptor that monitors and modifies database connection events. To create interceptors, we can use these abstract based classes. Consequently, this helps us avoid boilerplate code and focus on implementing custom logic. Now, let's see how all of these interceptors really work. I have already prepared the web API application. All these classes are here to help me explain the topic and are not interceptor related. But as you can see, I have some domain classes and interfaces and the context class with the configuration. Again, I assume if you are watching this video, you already know how DB context is created and how the configuration is prepared. But if you want to learn more about that, you can watch my video where I cover EF Core migrations and show how this configuration works as well. The link will be in the description below. Now, the important class to show you is the user class. Here, you can find several properties and a few methods to set some of those properties and validate one of them as well. I will use these methods later on in the video, so you must know about them. Now, with all the preparations done, I can focus on the topic of this video, interceptors. Just before I do that, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C Sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check the links in the description below. Okay. To continue, let's create a new folder here for all the interceptors I will cover in this video. So first, let's focus on the connection interceptor. That said, inside the created folder, let's create a new class and name it connection interceptor. First, I will inject a logger in this class using the primary constructor feature and named parameter logger. Also, to make this class a connection interceptor, it must inherit from the db connection interceptor abstract class. It provides a lot of different methods for us to override in this class. Since this class derives from db connection interceptor, it is called every time a database connection event occurs. In my example, I will focus on when a connection is opened and when it is closed. For demonstration purposes, I will log these events to the console. So let's override the first method named connection opened async. You can see it accepts the connection and the event data parameters, as well as the cancellation token. The connection parameter represents the DB connection, while the event data represents some useful data like the duration of the event, the start time of the event, etc. Now, let's simply use the logger to log simple information that the connection is opened. Next, let's override one more method, 
the connection closed async method. You can see this one has only two parameters without the cancellation token. Also, let's again log information with a simple message that the connection is closed. I think this is enough to show how this interceptor works and let's move on to another one. To show how the second interceptor works, let's create a new class in this folder and name it validate entities state interceptor. Again, I will inject the logger here with the primary constructor and the class will derive from the save changes interceptor class. As the previous base class, this one allows us to override a lot of different methods. Now, let's focus on just a single one, saving changes async. This one will trigger at the very beginning of the save changes async. You can see three parameters, with the event data, the result from the interceptor, and the cancellation token. Now, all I will do here is check if the context that represents our DB context from the event data is not null. And if it is not, let me log information here with the validating entities message. And then I will check all the entries in the change tracker using the event data dot context dot change tracker property and call the entries of user method to return a collection of entries of a given type. After I get each entry, I can simply call the entity property that represents my user entity and then the validate state method from the user class, the one you saw at the beginning of this video. Great, that's the second one done. And let's move on to the third one named Auditable Entities Interceptor. Here, I will do the similar thing I did with the previous interceptors, injecting the logger first, but also the time provider service. And this one must inherit from the Save Changes Interceptor. Now, let's override the Saving Changes Async method And here again, I will do the same check for the context not being null. If it's not null, I will call a new private method here named update auditable entities and pass the context as an argument. That's all I will do in this method and let's just add this private method here. You see, I just log a simple message here and then for each entry inside the change tracker that inherits from the iAuditable Entity interface, I check the state and based on that call the required method. If you remember, the user class inherits from this interface and has these methods implemented. Awesome! For the last interceptor, I will create a new class and name it Transaction Interceptor. Again, I will inject the logger service here because I want to log some info inside the overridden method and this time the class will inherit from the DB transaction interceptor. Now, as usual, let's override a single method. Let's use the transaction committed async, the one that fires when the transaction is committed. Here we again see the familiar parameters. And I will only log information here that the transaction with the transaction ID that I can get from the event data parameter is finished successfully. With all of our interceptors created, let's now register them inside the dependency injection container and add them to the DB context. Note that interceptors are registered per DB context instance when the context is configured. So, to do that, I will use the add scope method to register the connection interceptor service. Then, the same scope method to register validate entities state interceptor. Then, I need a scoped auditable entities interceptor. 
and finally a scoped transaction interceptor. But also, I need to add them to DB context service. So let's again use the builder.services property and call the add DB context method with the application DB context generic type parameter. For the configuration, I will provide two parameters, one for the service provider and the second for the context builder. Then let's use the builder to call the use SQL server method to configure the SQL database and provide the connection string, which I will get from the app settings file with the help of the configuration property and the get connection string method. Lastly, I will call the add interceptors method and use the service provider parameter to fetch each registered interceptor service here. Great, this is all I need to do regarding the configuration. Now I can simply prepare the migration file and update the database. Okay, at this point I can test this. I already have the controller prepared and here I have just a simple logic for the testing purposes. Nothing too complicated, but it will serve the purpose. So let's run the app and use Postman with the prepared request. Let's send it and we see we successfully created a new user. But now, if we check the logs, you can see our interceptors kicked in and executed the logic while the request was processed. Okay, you saw how interceptors work and by using them, we enhance the flexibility and control of our data interactions. This ensures our applications are robust and maintainable. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you like this one, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.